Welcome to Spotlight on Schools. I'm Jennifer Eddins. East Wake Middle School students are utilizing Lego robots to enhance their problem solving skills and learn simple programming. Today, we will see how students can have fun and solve problems at the same time. All right, Mr. Connect, explain your robotics program to us and what students are expected to do. All right. Well, the first thing we do is they're exposed to the very basic programming. Uh, they program first with just using the basic brick, which is this part of the robot. And they advance to much more complicated uh, programming. What they do is they learn some, they learn to flow chart with the robots, plan what they're going to do step by step. Then they use a graphic user interface, a GUI, drag and drop to actually do the programs for the robots. And they're, it's set at their own pace and it becomes increasingly more difficult. Okay, and have you noticed that they tend to improve as they go? Do they accept that challenge and continue to advance? Oh yes, in general most of them, uh, they love the robots. Uh, it's a big draw for students to come into my class. We do it in um, almost a month work, uh, working with the robots, if broken into two parts. Okay, and how do students get into the program? Well, in general, all my students, when they come into any of my classes, they're exposed for two to four weeks. I also have a smaller group that I'm having, I call them my robotic uh, assistants. And the, their point is they're trying to become experts in it so that they can actually take these into the core classrooms and work with them. And, you know, they have a lot of, the robots have a lot they can, a lot of capabilities that we don't actually get to here. Okay, and how do they incorporate those in the other classrooms? Uh, primarily, in, well, they can do a lot of measuring. When you program the robot, you can specify exactly how many degrees each tire goes. You can do it by rotations. You can do it by time. So there's ways to do it so that the students uh, practice measuring, um, circumference, uh, diameter. So mathematical applications. Yes. There's also a set of science instruments that can be attached to this. I'm afraid I'm not an expert in those. I'm just trying to get the kids to the point where they can actually help the eighth grade science teachers. Okay, and have you noticed that students are more motivated to problem solve using the robots? Does, do they get excited about it? They do. Uh, one of my students is actually trying to do a baseball diamond, a home run, and he's about two-thirds of the way there. Uh, and what he's doing is he's developing a program with a robot that actually hits the ball and then it runs the bases. And he's, they've had one nine weeks of it and they're working that he'll be hopefully perfecting that in the second nine weeks. Okay, and what skills do you think these students are honing that are imperative that they take with them in the future? Well, primarily uh, problem solving. What they're doing is they're learning a current technology, they're learning how to flow chart, and they're learning how to apply those different systems of problem solving in order to uh, reach their goal to solve their problem. And if they can problem solve, then that opens up any they, matter of jobs or career futures. Yeah, they can do an awful lot if they can problem solve. All right, Christian, tell us what you do with your Lego robot. Well, every day um, I program the robot on the computer, and then I have to build the, um, the parts of it so that it will work, and yeah. Okay, and how does that program on the computer work? Um, well, basically, just what we do is we have to connect it to the computer and then, like, we have different systems for it and, like, motor and sensors and stuff. Okay. So does that force you to consider problems and solve them every day? Yes. Yes. And what does your robot do once you've solved those problems and used the computer to figure these things out? Well, for this program, it will follow the line and if it gets too white it will I guess either turns or stop. Okay now have you enjoyed working with the Lego robot? Yes. How? Very why cool. is it fun? It's because like, I really like technology. Okay and does it make you look forward to coming to class? Is it different from just sitting in a, in a classroom and listening to the teacher? Yeah. Yeah and what's most fun about it? I'd say getting or watching it um, run after I program it. 
Okay, so feeling like you've achieved something, you had success, and it runs the way you want it to? Yeah. Yeah. How do you think that'll prepare you for the future? Um, well, getting to know, if I like, do a programming job or something. Okay. Do you have that interest for your future? What kind of job do you think you want to have? Do you know? Not exactly. Yeah. Still got time to figure that out, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, Mr. Pillman, explain to us about your STEM program here. Well, we are a STEM school, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, so, the purpose of the STEM program is to incorporate those subjects and those ideas all throughout all subjects and throughout the curriculum. Okay, and the LEGO initiative, working with the LEGO Robotics, how did that come about? Wake County chose us as part of a, a grant to work with LEGO, so um, it was they were set up in different pods, so we are in a group with Hodge Road Elementary and Nightdale High. So students who go to Hodge can then come to us in middle and then go to Nightdale High and get Legos in all three of those schools. Okay, and this emphasis on technology, we hear about it all the time. Right, right. Technology in the classroom, why is that so important? The world is just changing so fast, so students need to be able to work with that and move as, as fast as the technology is moving and be able to communicate all, uh, all throughout the world. It's not just um, learning in one classroom, but it's learning through the world. Okay, and that incorporates not only the robotics right. with Lego, but computers Com and other kinds of applications? Yes, absolutely. And that's, and that's what the STEM program is about, is getting those students prepared for what happens after school in, okay. in the 21st century. Okay, and now I know that you also have a computer lab in yes. the Media Center. How do the students utilize that and how do teachers utilize that into their curriculum? It, it's used for lots of different ways. Um, teachers come in uh, to do research, um, kind of the old-fashioned research and then write a paper, but also exploring and designing their own websites and and um, lot, there's lots of ways that students can, can get involved with technology. Right. And now the students who are working with the LEGO Robotics, yes. what specific skills are they having to learn in order to utilize those? The big, the big thing they're doing is problem solving. The, okay. they, get, they get a problem and then they have to figure out how to change the robot, how to program the robot to solve that problem. Whether it's just going a couple of feet and stopping, or whether it's drawing a picture or doing a certain course, they need to be able to figure out how to tell the robot to do what it needs to do. Okay, and the simple programming, how does that play into it? I'm, I'm assuming that's computer type it, it is programming? Com it is computer. Okay. Um, it, we have the LEGO NXT Mindstorms kit, uh, and that's just the, the software that they use. Okay. Um, and it's a, it's a great software, it's very drag and drop, they just tell the robot to move a certain amount of feet and plug the robot into it, and then the robot can go. So therefore they are They're utilizing doing, those programming mm -hmm, skills yes, yes. to make the robot act yes. the way they want it mm -hmm. to. So Chris, tell us why you enjoy the LEGO Robotics program. Because it's different than just like sitting there taking notes on stuff and you know, it gives me something to do with my hands. Okay, so instead of the traditional classroom setting where you're sitting there listening to the teacher, you're more involved. How so? Well, you have to like move around because you have to place the robot in specific places for some programs and stuff. Okay, do you like working with the computer and the robotics? Yeah, I do. Is that a field you're interested in going into? Mm -hmm. What kind of things are you curious about and maybe going into in the future? Um, something that isn't usual. Like most people want to be doctors or lawyers. I want to do something that's not as boring. Okay, so something more exciting. And have you found that kind of excitement and interest in this class with the robotics? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now tell us what you thought the first time you heard about this program before you got involved. What uh, piqued your interest in it? Um, I thought basically what I do. It's um, I imagine doing what I'm doing now. So. Okay, so you knew it was going to be like this and you looked forward to it. Mm -hmm. What made you come to know about the program? How did you learn about it? Well, in seventh grade, we got introduced to the robots just as a regular class. And then um, I did really well on it. Okay. And then Mr. Connect told me that if I want to, I can be a robotic assistant in eighth grade. Okay, and now what, what else is included in being a robotics assistant? Well, um, 
if Mr. Connects wants to try something with like the class, he can let us test it and then we try it out and see if it works for him. Okay, so you're a select group that get to try things out before the teacher even shows them to the rest of the class? Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel good. I yeah? Like, mm -hmm. Does it give you confidence that maybe this is something that bodes well for your future? Mm -hmm. Yes? Do you have any aspirations for a particular college or a particular goal? Mm, no, but I'll probably have to take some certain courses in high school and get become an engineer like this. Okay, so engineering is definitely an interest, and this is a STEM school, so it's good that you're being exposed to that then, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your favorite subjects? My favorite subjects are math and science. Okay, so that goes right along with utilizing technology and utilizing the robots in class? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Chris, tell us what yours is programmed to do. Uh, mine's supposed to draw a figure eight, which took me a long time to figure it out. Oh, what took so long about it? Um, the circles sometimes would overlap as they didn't like right there. Okay. And, but that's as close as I'm going to get. Oh, uh, you think that's as close? You, can't, you don't think you can work on it a little longer and get it perfect? If I had more time, maybe. Okay, so it takes a lot of time and patience as we learned earlier. Yeah. Well, it looks like it did a great job. Well, thank you. Uriah, explain to us how you got involved in this robotics program. Well, I started in sixth grade. Mr. Connect, we did his traditional technology and design innovation class. And then one day he asked me if I wanted to do his robotics class, and I signed up in seventh grade. Okay, and so now you're a robotics assistant. What kind of things do you do as a robotics assistant? Basically, we get robot test them and stuff like that. Okay, and what kind of skills do you think you're learning as you participate in the program? I think we learn engineering skills because some programs involve building with the robot. Okay, great. And are you focused on utilizing those skills in the future? Do you know what you want to be or how you want to use it? I expect to be an engineer dealing with software. Oh, okay, and now you get experience with software using the robots. Tell us about that software. Is that pretty easy to use? Yeah, it's pretty basic. You select a few stuff like forward, five, forward, and you can go on the computer and program stuff to okay. go on your robot. Okay, so you use the computer and then your robot hopefully behaves the way you want it to? Yes. Okay, now do you go home and tell your parents how excited you are about this program? I did last year. <laughs> you did last year? It was brand new then? Yes. Okay, so if you had advice for a student who was thinking about joining this program, what advice would you give them? If you like building stuff, messing with Legos, or want to be an engineer when you grow up, you should probably join this class. Okay, Uriah, explain to us what it's doing. The robots program to drive forward until senses of bend or something in its back. When it senses something, it backs up to the right, just like a car when it senses something, it backs up. Okay, like a backup camera in a car. Yes. And if it doesn't sense something, it just keeps driving forward. The program, the program is based off of going forward until it senses have been, so it goes forward forever. Okay, good job. I so, say, Caleb, what grade are you in? I'm in eighth grade, ma'am. Okay, when did you start this program? Um, I started in sixth grade when I got here. Okay, and how has it evolved as you've been here? Um, the projects, like what you have to make the robot do, has gotten way more difficult than it did in the beginning. Okay, and what skills have you had to learn in order to adapt to those more difficult projects? Patience. Patience. That's a hard thing for, for a <laughs> teenager to learn, <laughs> I would fine. imagine. Do you have advice for anyone who's interested in this program? Um, I would say you should do it. It's um, really interesting. It's better than other classes. It's just hands-on experience. Okay, so hands-on makes class more exciting. Yes, ma'am. And every day it feels like a hands-on experience instead of just sitting and taking notes? Yes, ma'am. And what do you feel like you've learned through the program, um, besides patience? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've learned that engineering is, it's a good subject, okay. and it's very interesting. 
Okay. Yeah. Do you think it may be something you want to go into in the future? Um, no, ma'am. I'm planning on going to the military. Okay, the military. Yes, ma'am. Well, I would imagine there's a lot of programming and engineering that goes on in the military yes, as well. Yes, ma'am. Do you think you'll find yourself in that kind of position um, when you get there? I might. I don't know yet. Okay. But it's helping you learn and eliminate and kind of consider your future, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you, ma'am. Set up. Oh, no. I am too messed up. You can tell the right side tire is messed up. That right tire is going. But I don't so explain to us what yours is programmed to do. Um, this one is programmed to do a home run. Okay. Uh, it's halfway done. It's supposed to hit the ball, then go. Okay. But I didn't get to that part. Okay, so you're still working on that. Yeah. So it so it hits a home run and then it goes around the bases. Yes, ma'am. Okay, what kind of problem are you facing now? What challenge do you have to correct? Um, the right tire. It's all jacked up right now. Okay. Then I have to build the arm for it to actually swing and hit the ball. Okay. So, Ms. Allen, explain to us the benefits of the STEM program here at your middle school. Well. It helps us. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm a scientist. I, I'm actually, I started my career as an adult as a geologist. So okay. science is very important to me. And, and, it, and it, helps, um, it helps to have a STEM program that really focuses on um, science and technology and engineering and math, which is what STEM stands for. But it also can stand for strategies that engage the mind. And of course, what you saw with the robots was kids who were fully engaged in, in developing something. Uh, they had to take it from the very beginning to, to a product. And, and that is so important in our world today. And not only that, it also, they had to do it together, a collaboration. And, and so all of that just, just comes together and gets them really prepared for high school and college and really starts them to think about what they want to do as adults. I will say that we were very impressed with the students and they had such pride in what they had done and mm -hmm. what they could make those mm -hmm. robots mm -hmm. do. Have mm -hmm. you seen that from the students, that excitement? Oh yes, yes. And there are a lot of kids who want to be involved in this program. And um, I mean, we have a number of electives, but Mr. Connect's um, technology classes are very sought after um, by the students, and they want to do that kind of stuff. And so then when they hear, well, if you take this class and then you follow it with this class, then you have the opportunity to become in this to, to become a member of this robotics program, right? And you know, and kids love that, um, and they love developing things like you know all the gaming things and all of that is is that technology and engineering piece, um, which which is so important in our world today. Right. And another skill that we've been talking about, and we noticed they're using problem solving skills, which, and I think I mentioned in one part of the tape that we don't know what the jobs of the future are going to be. Oh, yeah. So problem solving skills are imperative. Right. And right. is that a goal that you guys have? Oh, yes. Um, well, that's, that's, part of, that's part of 21st century learning that's skills. Right. That's part of the common core right. um, is, are those problem solving skills and critical thinking skills. Um, we, we want our kids to be able to do that. Um, we want um, students to, it, it, when you have those skills, it enables you to be able to learn on your own. Right. Because as you say, we don't know what we're preparing these students for. Right. And we don't know where they're going to go in life. But if they learn how to solve those problems and have confidence in themselves that I can do this, I can learn about this myself, um, that will, that's really what we want to right. be as adults. And that will lead them to be successful in any career yeah, they yeah, choose, yeah. whether it be a science, engineering, mm -hmm. technology career, or any type of career. Yes. And now, what else have you seen as far as a response? Have you gotten any response from parents, or what community response do you see from having the STEM program? Is there a lot of interest? Well, as you know, um, over the past few months, we have been engaged in the Nightdale area um, education working group 
Um, and, and part of that is that we've got STEM schools here in Nightdale. And, and so uh, through those conversations, through that group, um, I think that the community now understands that our STEM programs really are important. And they, they are important for us to have a feeder system from elementary to middle to high school because most of our kids go to Nightdale High and now they've got six academies. Right. A lot of those are based on science, technology, yes. engineering, and math. Right. And so it just follows that we are preparing our students to be part of those, uh, those academies. If they go to East Wake, there's three STEM schools and a global school at East Wake. If they go to Rollsville, they have a biotechnology focus. So it's very important for us to prepare them for that. Right, so they don't show up to high school completely unaware exactly. of, of these programs exactly. and they already have a, an initiation into right. it. Right, right. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for coming. Come again. Uh, yes. <laughs> East Wake Middle School is utilizing a traditional childhood toy to teach their students problem solving skills. And since most of the jobs of the future haven't even been determined yet, those problem solving skills will be necessary. We thank them for their permission to witness their program today. If you think we should spotlight your school, email me at jennifer.edens at ewtv.org. Thank you for watching this episode of Spotlight on Schools.